Hi, welcome to Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley, and I want to start this episode by saying thank you to everybody who watches Fish on Fridays, especially those on a regular basis. Those of you who, who tune in every Friday, we're grateful. I want to say a special thanks to the producer and editor of Fish on Fridays, Emily Shimaleski. Now, why am I starting with all those thank yous? It's because this taping is episode number 150. I can't believe we've done 150 episodes of Fish on Fridays, but um, it's been an absolute joy to do it. And, um, you know, hopefully with the grace of God, I'll keep doing them and Emily will stay with me and we'll um, we'll keep putting out content uh, for you to enjoy. And hopefully that'll uh, help you to grow deeper in your faith. And that's that's what it's all about, really. It's just to evangelize through this particular medium. So anyway, welcome to episode number 150, which is about two really brave women who were martyrs in the early church. I'm wearing red today. Uh, to remind us of that, because a priest would normally wear the vestments would be red when we have feast days of, of saints that are martyrs. And this goes way back into the early church. We're going to talk about two women, Perpetua and Felicity, and they both died right around the year 202 in northern Africa in Carthage. Uh, they were made to be part of the games, and, and they were killed as, as part of that. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but um, I want to start by saying that, let me, let's back up and look at martyrdom a bit. I think sometimes we have this idea that martyrdom in the early church happened continuously for centuries, and it really didn't. Um, it was sporadically, uh, Christians were sporadically persecuted by Roman emperors. We know there were 10 particular Roman emperors who would uh, persecute Christians, and who did, and there were some that didn't in between there. And um, starting in 64 AD with Emperor Nero and ending with Diocletian, who abdicated the throne right around 305 AD. So you've got about 250 plus years of sporadic persecution, sometimes really, really vicious sometimes a little bit more localized in certain places. Um, but in this instance, uh, with Perpetua and Felicity, it's going to happen where they are from, northern Africa, uh, and Carthage in particular, which was kind of like the, the Roman cultural center of Africa, of Romanized Africa. It was a big city, and it was an important city. Um, and most people who were Christians at that time were killed because they were considered countercultural. And what do I mean by that? They didn't worship the Roman gods. They often didn't pay taxes. They often did, they were pacifists, so they wouldn't fight in the army or be be part of the army. And they were just strange, and they were other, and so they were easily looked at as lower on society's totem pole and and easy targets or scapegoats for for persecution. And a lot of this happened in terms of making them part of the games. As I said before, it's hard for us to imagine today, like in the Super Bowl, we have a halftime entertainment show. But imagine in the Super Bowl if we brought people that. Everybody in society pretty much deemed other or less than, and we just watch them be killed in some kind of a gladiatorial game. It's it's kind of preposterous for us to think about that, but that's kind of what happened in in the arenas in and around the Roman Empire. And um, ironically, the more Christians were killed, the more people wanted to become Christians. There was great empathy and sympathy for um, for these Christians who were willing to die for this faith, and a lot of people who witnessed this at the games would say, I, I want to have that faith. I, I want to be able to live for something and be willing to die for it um, because I feel so strongly about it. And I think this, this sentiment is best summed up by an early church thinker named Tertullian who said, the blood of the martyrs is seed for the church. In other words, when martyrs die, um, they really add to the growth of the church where people are inspired and empowered to be people of faith because of their witness. So let's get back to Perpetua and Felicity now. We, what we know about them, and this is why they're so important, they're mentioned in, in any canon of the early church. When you talk about martyrs, you talk about Eucharistic prayers at Mass, Perpetua and Felicity are always mentioned. And, and it's primarily because we have a primary source. Perpetua was a noblewoman, and she was clearly educated, and she was wealthy. And why do we know that? Because she could write. And you wouldn't if you were a peasant, number one. And number two, she had a servant named Felicity. You wouldn't be able to afford a servant if you weren't wealthy. So we, we can surmise some things about Perpetua. But a lot of what we know about her, especially her final days, was because of this diary that she wrote. And as she left to be killed, literally to go up on, onto the into the arena to be killed... Um, she passed it along to somebody else who finished the details of her death. So so we know more about her, somebody who died in 202, we know more about her than most people who are contemporaries of her time. It's really kind of fascinating to think about. And what do we know about them? We know that she was part of a small band of what we call catechumens. Who, these are adults who are not baptized and who are going through a process of training, um, of preparation, 
to become initiated into the Catholic Church. And so she was, I guess you could say, somewhat of a leader in this because of her status, perhaps. Um, but she and, and Felicity, with a small group of other catechumens, were arrested. And they weren't arrested so much because they were Christian, but because they refused to worship uh, the Roman gods and pay tribute to them. We do know that, that Perpetua just gave birth. She had a son who was um, less than a year old, and we know that Felicity was in fact pregnant, ready to give birth when she was arrested. She was right at the at the point of of giving birth at that at that time, um, which is interesting to think about. Um, what's going to happen is Felicity is going to give birth right before she's killed, and um, it's pretty amazing. You think about the heroism of these two women and, and what they went through. Um, just by way of an example. Um, you'd almost get the impression that the Roman soldiers didn't really want to kill these these people, but um, they gave them opportunities to renounce their faith in Christ. One of the things they did in particular, like for Perpetua, is they brought her dad, who was a pagan, they brought her dad into the arena, into the jails, if you will, and, and he pled with her, he was pleading with her, please, please, think of your old man, think of your baby, um, and you think of your, your newborn son, you've got so much to live for. And she refused to. She said, you know, this is my identity. She said, this is this is a direct quote. She said, Father, do you not see this vessel as a water jar? She pointed to this cup or this, this vessel by her. She said, can it be called anything other than what it is? And so I cannot call myself anything other than what I am, and that is a Christian. The guards went so far as to even beat up her dad to kind of show, hey, this is what's going to happen to him. You got to renounce your faith. Otherwise, it's not just you. It's going to be, you know, your dad and, and other people are going to suffer for your faith, your your, your faith in Christianity. Uh, but she refused to do it. And eventually she was taken out with Felicity. After Felicity had given birth, they were taken out with the others and they were stripped and then they were scourged. They were whipped and they were gored. There was a bull in the arena that, that charged at them and gored them. And, and it was a long, gruesome, I don't want to say battle, but for lack of a better word, it was a long, gruesome period of time before they were finally dispatched by being stabbed through the throat. And it said that, that Perpetua, who was already mortally wounded, when the soldier came up to her with the sword to her neck, she held it with her hand and put it to her throat as if to make sure he was uh, going to be clear with his shot, to the, the fatal shot, if you will, uh, through, her, through her neck. Um, but incredible bravery when you think about this. One of the people that was killed with them was a man named Satyrus, and he has been chronicled in his own way, um, kind of mockingly. There was a, a very famous mosaic tile made of him. A leopard or a jaguar uh, was pounced on him as part of the games and started gnawing at his face and killing him in that way. Um, and apparently he shed a lot of blood because um, a lot of people in the crowd were chanting, well washed, well washed. Um, he was washed with his own blood, which is kind of like a, a crude, satir you know, satiric way of talking about baptism. He was well washed in his own blood. But um, so Satyrus is remembered in the same time, uh, going through the same treatment. But but Perpetua and Felicity have been, have been honored almost Im immediately after their death as as early church martyrs and really great examples of the faith. And you know, so what's the takeaway from all of this? You know, to talk about these these brave women. Um, you know, I, I, I question how, how much do I take my faith for granted? You know, they died as martyrs. Uh, do I take my faith for granted? Would I be willing to die for my faith? I like to think I would be, but you know, when push comes to shove, who knows, right? The other thing I like about this story is Perpetua and Felicity were not just, you know, master and servant. They were friends. They were, they were sisters in Christ. And so they supported each other. You get the sense of that when you read her diary, when you read these notes that, that she really came to rely on, on Felicity and Felicity relied on Perpetua. And I think, you know, who do I look to for my faith? Who do I seek support from? Who looks to me for my, you know, for support in their faith? You know, am I that support for them? And, and that's an important lesson, I think, too. And over and above all of that, I think, is the fact that they were just obviously brave. They were very courageous. And, you know, can I show greater courage in how I live my life? Hopefully, prayerfully, none of us will suffer the kind of faith that Perpetua and Felicity did. Um, and, and, you know, dare I say, it's tougher to live for your faith than to die for your faith in some ways, because we have to, you know, we have to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And, um, you know, they were models of bravery. Can I be brave in how I live my faith? You know, can I, can I 
be who I am as a Christian and, and like she did when she would talk to her father and, and recognize it as my identity and live it out in such a way that I might even take some, some criticism for it. But, you know, just some things to think about uh, on these, uh, with these two women, just wonderful, wonderful ladies who we celebrate, by the way, every March 7th, their feast day is uh, in the Catholic Church and we, when we remember them. So uh, perpetual and felicity, great, uh, great people to remember and, um, you know, to, to emulate. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you'd like to share it, please feel free to do so. As always, we'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook. But either way, thank you for tuning in uh, to Fish on Fridays every Friday. And like I said, especially 150 episodes worth. So thank you very much. Um, until next time, please be good to each other and God bless. <laughs>